How's everybody doing? Tinkering with Harleys. I want to thank all of you who have subscribed. I greatly appreciate it. And if you're watching these videos and enjoy them, by all means, please subscribe. And if you like the videos, hit the thumbs up. Well, today's video is going to be an answer to a question I was emailed. I got a question from a guy who says he's owned uh, three, three, four, uh, twin camps. And he wants to know what the big deal is with the cam plates, all the negative things that he's heard about the cam plates, so on and so forth. So I figured, you know, I thought about it and I said, well, you know, they don't produce the twin cams anymore. Harley, Harley stopped producing them. And, uh, I, I'm guessing the majority of bikes that are out there now are twin cams. They are the most readily available used bike. So there's probably more twin cams out there than anything else. So if you've never owned a single cam bike, you wouldn't know. Um, now, to further his emails, he wanted to know what the difference was with the twin cam cam plate versus the single cam cam plate. So if you've never owned a single cam bike and you've never been inside, you don't know. So I figured that's what we'd cover today. So the short answer on what's the difference between a twin cam plate and a single cam plate, the single cam plate never existed. The twin cam plate was something brand new in 1999 to accommodate the new engine design. Prior to 99 or up to 99 with the single cam Evos, there was no cam plate. And the cam actually rode inside the cam cover in a, in a bushing in the cam cover. And it's been that way since 1936. Um, so I figure I'll give you a little bit of history here also, um, because all of this stuff runs hand in hand. Now, when Harley Davidson finds something that works, they stay with it forever. Um, and the twin cam was probably the biggest change in motors since 1936. Um, when they, they came out with the knucklehead. Now, prior to 1936, Harley Davidson did not have oil pumps. It was a gravity feed that gravity down through the engine and it didn't circulate the oil. The used oil would drop onto the ground. Um, now any of you who have ever seen the older bikes, 35 and older, and seen the three gas caps or the three caps on top of a gas tank. Two of them are for gas, and the third one is for oil. So essentially what it did was you would fill your oil up and it would gravity down through the motor to lubricate everything and it wouldn't recirculate it. It would just drop out on the ground. It's called a total loss system. In 1936, Harley-Davidson came out with their first oil pump, which was on the knucklehead. And they kept that design from 1936 to 1999. There was, I think, four variations of it over the years, but it was the same, same design, exactly the same design. They, they improved upon it a little bit as bikes got newer, but knuckleheads, panheads, shovelheads, and evos all had the external oil pump. So in 1999, when they redesigned and came up with the, the twin cam, they eliminated the external oil pump and they had the twin cams. It went from a single cam to dual cam. So moving the, the oil pump inside the engine, which now goes over the pinion shaft and is directly 
driven by the pinion shaft rather than being gear driven and being external. And you've got the two cams. So the cam plate supports the cam, but it also supports the oil pump. And now with the, the older bikes with the external oil pump, the oil went directly into the case. With the twin cam, it has to go through the cam plate and be distributed through the cam plate into the rest of the engine. So that's the differences. Um, that they're, 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 like I said, it's probably the biggest change they've made to a motor since 1936. They, they completely redesigned the lower end. So figured to give you a little bit of history there. So now to get to the negative aspects of the cam plate of the twin cam. Um, first, it's made out of cast aluminum and they have had problems with it. Um, cast isn't real, real strong. I mean, there, there's lots of people that are still running the, the, the stock cam plates, um, but cast isn't strong. It moves more with heat. It has bigger expansion and contraction than say a billet cam plate would have. Um, plus it's cast and when it's cast, you get air bubbles. So it presents weak spots. And these have been the downfalls or where they had the problems with the, uh, with the cam plates. So it, that's where you hear the negative and you'll hear some people that, that like this, the stock cam plates, they do work and they work well. But if you start to do engine modifications, you need to get rid of that stock cam plate. Now, the gentleman that wrote me, I don't know whether he has stock cam plates or he has aftermarket cam plates in it. I don't know. Um, but the, the cam plates did work well. The, the cast, Cast cam plates did work well, but yeah, they had problems. I myself had a problem with one. I mean, I had one crack on me. And uh, so that's when I, I went to a billet. But yeah, you, you're going to hear arguments back and forth on stock cam plate versus billet cam plate. And my preference is a billet. It's stronger, um, has better oil flow. It's machined better. The check valve that you have, the pressure release valve is machined. It's just not cast, so you get a better seal there. So those are, are just some of the differences. So I figured I'd put this together real quick, give you a little bit of history, and uh, hope this answers your question. And those of you who didn't know any of this, I hope you learned something from it. And... Till next time, thanks for watching and everybody be safe out there.